Hey everybody, I think we've got a good video for you. I think it's gonna be a challenging video, but if you stick with it, I think you can understand this diagram all the better, okay? It's, it's one of the more challenging videos I think that I'm gonna put out there. Here's the deal. We're gonna look at the impact of per unit subsidies on the market participants, okay? Meaning the supplier and the demander. And there are two ways to talk about the impact of per unit subsidies on those market participants. Just like a per unit tax, where we can talk about either the burden of the tax or the changes in surpluses, consumer producer surplus, on a subsidy, we can talk about the benefit of a subsidy or the change in their surpluses, okay? And again, just like a tax, those are different questions that give us different answers, okay? So just to make clear for this one, per unit subsidy, what we're gonna be doing is looking at the benefit of a subsidy that goes to the consumer and the benefit that goes to the producer, but also a change in their surpluses. And again, we're gonna get two different answers for those two different questions. Now, let's get to the graph. You can see that I've already got a uh, subsidy wedge right here, okay? At Econ Busters, we really like the subsidy wedge and the tax wedge if I was doing a tax, the subsidy wedge as a modeling tool. We don't really feel the need to shift either the supplier demand curve. Just to let you know, if we gave the subsidy to the demander, the demand curve would shift right through that point right there. And that's basically all the shift that the curve is doing is giving us that point, okay? But the subsidy wedge can give us that. Or if we gave the subsidy to the producer, that supply curve would go right through that point right there there. But we don't need to do it because who we physically give the money to has nothing to do with their change in surpluses nor how much of the benefit of the subsidy that they receive, okay? So instead, we use a cleaner tool, just the subsidy wedge, and we bring it in. But before I do that, let's just make sure we understand that subsidy wedge. That vertical distance, that red line right there, is the per unit subsidy. It's going to separate the PP from the PC, PP being price producer, PC, price consumer. Remember, price is a benefit to the producer, right? Basically, we're going to see that price producer go up, their benefits going up. Price is a cost to the consumer. We're going to see PC go down, their cost is going down. They're both going to benefit, okay? So, and we're separating out the amount the consumer pays from their per unit revenue of the producer. And again, the difference between the amount the consumer pays and how much the producer receives a per unit, rev uh, per unit revenue is that per unit subsidy. Finally, when it comes to that subsidy wedge, just like a tax wedge, we're focused on our market participant curves, which is the MPC and the MPB. I say that because at some point you're gonna have externalities going on at the same time on the same graph, which means we're gonna have an MSC and an MSB curve. We ignore those curves. We focus in on MPC and MPP, or M, yeah, MPP, and those are the curves we focus on. We bring that subsidy wedge in completely, block out the social cost, social benefit curve. So bring that in. Here's my MPC and my MPB, and it's going to go in right there. So there is my subsidy wedge. As you can see, I've already marked the original equilibrium, giving us the price market and what would have been price consumer and price producer prior to the per unit subsidy. You can see that PC going down and PP going up. Both the consumer likes that their price going down. The producer likes their price going up. So they're both benefiting, okay? I've even marked the original quantity market, the original quantity supplied and quantity demanded. Now, what we'll notice is when that PP goes up, the supplier is going to supply more, right? Basically, you can see this as a movement along the supply curve. As that price goes up, the quantity supply is going to increase. So we're going to increase all the way to right here. Quantity supply is going to increase by that amount. When that price consumer goes down, it's going to be a movement along the demand curve. Their quantity demand is going to increase by the same amount, okay? So this is a market based intervention. With market-based interventions, the market's going to clear. Quantity supply is going to equal quantity demanded. So I'm going to go ahead and put QS, but I also want you to remember that after the subsidy, that QS is quantity supplied and quantity demanded. All right, now let's get to the benefit of the subsidy first, okay? The benefits of the subsidy. When you talk about that, you need to account for every single dollar the government has given to the market participants. Well, how many dollars have they given to the market participants? Well, per unit, right? This vertical distance, which is this vertical distance, that's how much they're paying. Quantity supplied and quantity demanded, right? Right there, so that distance 
So this entire rectangle is what we call the government outlay. And again, when we talk about the producer benefit and the consumer benefit, we need to account for the entire government outlay. Now, to do that, I'm gonna to have to add in a little something right here. I'm gonna to have to dash that line all the way across. And so here's the deal. For the producer, they're getting this much of the subsidy, regardless of who the government physically gives the money to. Remember, just like with per unit taxes, okay? It doesn't matter on the per unit tax side who physically pays the money to the government as to who takes on the burden or how their surpluses change. Same with the subsidy. It doesn't matter who we physically give it to. It's all about the relative elasticities of our market participants. And I've kind of drawn the relative elasticities about the same for this particular graph because it's already challenging enough. And so they're gonna share the benefits of the subsidy about equally, okay? So here we go, price producer has gone up by that amount and they're getting that amount all the way to there. So that rectangle from here to there, to there, to there is their benefit, okay? That's the producer's benefit of the subsidy. That's the amount of the government outlay that the producer received, okay? For the consumer, their price went down by this much, okay? Their cost per unit has gone down by that much. And they've seen that for all of these goods, okay? And the reason their price is going down by that much is they're receiving that much of the money themselves. Basically, you kind of think about it that way, okay? So of this government, um, of the government outlay, this rectangle is the consumer's benefit. Okay, so we've taken care of who's receiving the benefit of the subsidy, and we're remembering when we say that, we're saying of the government outlay, we need to account for every single dollar of that government outlay, how much went to the producer, how much went to the consumer, we've got that done. Now we need to talk about their change in surpluses, which is going to be less, okay? Which shouldn't kind of surprise us, okay? Remember, there's benefits, and we just talked about the benefits of the subsidy, then there's cost, and then there's profit, which we generally use the word surplus in economics, okay? So it's not surprising that surplus might be less than the benefits. So what's gonna be the change in the producer surplus? Well, let's look at the producer surplus prior to the subsidy. This would have been PP prior to the subsidy. Take that PP to the supply curve, right? That would be their per unit revenue, okay? That price is a benefit to them. Their curve is a cost to them, right? So that's the cost. So it would have been this triangle just right there. Well, what happened here is their PP went up. Well, take that all the way to the supply curve. Remember, quantity supply and quantity demand are all the way out here. Take that all the way to there. Here's their cost curve, right? Here's their cost curve. So this is now their producer surplus, which means out of A, B, and C, A and B is their increase in producer surplus. A, B, and C was their benefit. A, uh, A and B is their increase in producer surplus. Now, for the consumer, okay? When it comes to the consumer, well, what was their surplus? Well, their curve is a benefit curve, right? So this is my benefit curve. This was their price, right? Price is a cost to the consumer. So I've got cost, right? Right there, I've got my benefits. So it was this entire triangle. Now their price went down. That means their cost went down. I take that to the demand curve. Still that demand curve is their benefit curve. So this is their new consumer surplus. So if I was to do D, E, F, and G, D, E, F, and G was the benefit the consumer got, but their change in surplus was a little less than that. It was just D, E, and F, okay? Now, let me talk a little bit about why the consumer's surplus change was different than their benefit change. Imagine I was gonna buy a pair of shoes, okay? And let's say that the total value I put on the shoes to me, okay, the benefit I think I'm gonna get from this pair of shoes is $150, but the price tag is $200. So I'm like, hmm, probably not gonna buy it, right? By the way, that's what we're talking about here. The consumer would not have bought those goods without the subsidy. But let's then say the government comes in and says, hey, I'm gonna give you $100 towards buying these shoes. You can only use this $100 towards buying these shoes, but that's what I'm gonna do, which would lower the price of the shoes to $100, right? Well, what would be the benefit? Well, they gave me $100, right? So the benefit would be $100. 
what would be my surplus change? Well, again, my value I put on the shoes was $150. The price was $200. They gave me $100, so the price now to me, my PC truly now is $100. So my surplus gain is only $50. I know that was a lot, and I want to rewind that tape. But here's the idea. The benefit, they gave me $100, it was $100. They reduced my cost by $100, that's my benefit. My surplus gain though was only $50. Why? Because I wasn't gonna buy the shoes without them giving me that $100 benefit or at least, I guess they need to give me at least a $51 benefit, right? But they gave me a $100 benefit, so now I'll buy the shoes. That's what's going on with these units. The consumer wouldn't have bought them without the subsidy, okay? Now, when it comes to the producer, I'm going to kind of zero in on just this box right here, okay? The first thing to remember is the producer would not have produced these goods. Why? Their marginal private cost was greater, right? Their marginal private cost was greater than the original PP they would have received. But here's what the government's going to do. The government's going to give them this much more money, right? We've already established this is their benefit, not their surplus change. This is their benefit. Now, it's actually more than that. They're getting all of this plus this, but I just want to zoom in on these additional goods that the producer's now going to do. All of this, by the way, went straight to surplus. So this additional benefit went straight to surplus, but not for these goods. That's the key that I want you to see. So for this, these goods, here's the benefit, right? but their cost is greater for all of these goods, right? They wouldn't have produced them. Why? Because that cost is greater. So what does that mean? Their surplus gain is just that triangle, right? Just that triangle. The dollars right here that I'm kind of representing right here that were given to them was just to cover their cost, was just to cover their cost. They did get surplus gains, but it's just this triangle right here. So again, the producer surplus change would be that shape right there. The consumer's surplus gain would be that shape right there. And again, the benefit to the consumer would be this entire rectangle. The benefit to the producer would be this entire rectangle. Now, as an addendum to the video, you've pretty much, that's it. I just wanted to show it one more time right here so that we can get this, okay? For, and I'm only looking again at these units right there, okay? For the producer, right? For the producer, they got those dollars from PM to PP. So there's those additional dollars. That's their benefit. That's their benefit. That's their benefit. That's their benefit, okay? But the dollars below this line were simply to cover their additional costs to make those extra units. So their surplus gain ends up only being that triangle for the consumer. The key on the consumer is what those dollars did is it reduced their cost, just like that pair of shoes I was talking about. It reduced their cost. That's the benefit they got, that reduction in cost. Now, here's the deal. Their um, benefits were less for these additional goods. That's why they weren't buying these, right? Their benefits were less for those additional goods. So their surplus gain that they got was just this area. And then to just finally just finish this up because I know it's confusing. Let me say it again on the surplus side. This might make sense is, hey, what's their PC now because of the subsidy? That's their true PC, right? So this is the cost of acquiring these additional units. That's their cost. What's the benefits of acquiring these additional units? It's this, right? That shape right there. That's the total benefit right there. Well, how much does the total benefit exceed the cost right there? Consumer surplus. One last time. D, E, and F. That's the consumer surplus. D, E, F, G. That's their benefit. As for the producer, A, B, uh, C, and I guess I'll use a different letter here, H, right? A, B, C, their increase in producer surplus, A, B, C, H, their benefit they got. I told you it was gonna be challenging. 
If you watch that video twice, I think you'll master it. I think you'll get it. Um, and the final thing is you might just sit down with a piece of paper afterwards and go, okay, let me see if I can really get this and then go back and look at the video, right? It was challenging, but through this like struggling, you're going to get even deeper understanding of these diagrams. Hope that makes sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.